Hi, I'm Ryan from Ratings.com. Today we'll be doing a review of the 2021 TCL 5 series, the S546 QLED. We'll be evaluating it on our standardized test bench to see how it performs and if you should buy it. We bought and tested the 65-inch model, and we expect the other sizes to perform similarly. This TV is the newer version of the 2025 series, the S535, but is released alongside it instead of replacing it, as both are being sold with different smart platforms. The TCL S546 has a pretty standard design, so there isn't too much to talk about. The stand has two positions, so you can have the feet sit closer together if you have a narrow entertainment cabinet, or wide for more stability. The feet don't attach very well, as they can twist during installation, making them potentially not symmetrical. The inputs are located on the right-hand side, and the three HDMI 2.0 ports allow you to connect multiple devices. One of the ports also supports ARC, or audio return channel, that you can connect to your receiver or soundbar to play sound from your TV through your external speakers. The back of the TV fits the VESA mount standard, so you can wall mount it for a cleaner look, and it has a pretty typical thickness, so it will stick out a bit. The build quality of this TV is decent. Again, pretty standard for a mid-range TV. It's made of plastic and does feel a bit cheap with some flex in the panels. As I mentioned before, the feet are the weak point here, but if you're wall mounting it, you really shouldn't have any issues. Now, onto our test results, and we'll start with the contrast. A high contrast ratio results in deep dark scenes, which is good if you want to watch movies in a dark room, like a home theater environment. This TV performs very well with a VA type panel, so dark scenes appear deep and detailed. Local dimming is a feature to further improve dark scenes for a better movie watching experience, but unfortunately on this TV, it's limited by the relatively few zones, so it doesn't help much. It's also a bit of a downgrade from last year's 5 series, the S535, as there's noticeably more blooming. On the other hand, if you want to use the TV in a bright room, then a high peak brightness is important to overcome glare. The TCL S546 has good brightness, about typical of a mid-range TV. It isn't quite as good in newer high dynamic range or HDR content, where the brightness is only decent at providing an impactful experience. Also important for a bright room is good reflection handling. You can see that this TV handles reflections all right, but the intensity isn't significantly reduced, so it isn't the best choice for a room with lots of light, or you'll end up struggling to see in dark scenes. If you've got a wide seating arrangement, or like to watch TV with family and friends, then good viewing angles help to ensure no one's left with washed out colors or crushed details. Unfortunately on this TCL, the image quality drops dramatically when viewed off angle, so the image is really only best from directly in front. A TV's ability to take lower quality signals and improve them through image processing can greatly improve the picture quality if you aren't sending the highest possible resolution and bitrate content. This is referred to generally as upscaling, and the TCL S546 struggles here in some content. With 480p signals, it does a bad job upscaling. Instead of displaying 480p, it scales to 576p instead with a distorted aspect ratio. This makes the 2021 TCL 5 series a bad choice for those of you with extensive DVD collections, or for those who enjoy gaming on some legacy consoles. If your DVD player is able to upscale to a higher resolution like 1080p, then this isn't a problem. Otherwise, the TCL S546 does a good job upscaling other resolutions. Another area the TCL S546 struggles in is with color accuracy. Accurate true-to-life colors help make the image realistic and reflect what the creators intended for you to see. The 2021 TCL 5 series we bought had bad out-of-the-box accuracy, as the whole image is too warm, making it look like there's a red tint to everything. Usually, this kind of problem can be fixed with a calibration, but that's not entirely true here. Although you can technically calibrate the TV to get good numbers, the resulting image isn't actually good since you introduced too many problems from over-calibrating. When we recalibrated less intensely, we had a final image free of calibration artifacts, but it was still only decently accurate. The overall image was still too warm, and the white balance was off the target. While this does vary between units, so yours might be better, it can be a sign of poor quality control. So if you care about accurate colors and white balance, we can't recommend the TCL S546 for you. An overall uniform screen brightness and color is important for watching sports or playing video games, to avoid the appearance of clouding known as the dirty screen effect. This does vary between units, but we expect the 2021 TCL 5 series QLED we bought to be about typical. It's decent overall, but the edges are noticeably darker, and there are visible vertical striations throughout the screen, which may be very bothersome in sports or video game content. In really dark scenes, the black uniformity is noticeably better, so there aren't really any distracting bright areas, which is nice. A lot of people care that a TV has good colors. In the case of the TCL S546, the TV can display deep saturated greens, reds, and blues. This is great for those who like an image with extra saturation, or for watching high dynamic range content on streaming services. Again, the colors are noticeably off target. Some TVs struggle to display smooth gradients, so when watching a movie with a sunset, some banding can be visible. 
In the case of this TV, though, it isn't much of an issue with good gradient performance, and there's also a gradation clear setting, which helps a bit more. When playing video games, a fast response time is important for the clearest image without distracting blur. The TCL S546 has a good and fast response time overall, but some blur or smearing may be noticeable in dark scenes. If you look closely at the moving photo taken on the TV, you might notice some duplication of the logo. This is because the TV flickers, but overall it shouldn't be a problem as it flickers at a higher frequency than is noticeable. A low input lag is also important for a responsive feel when playing video games, and thankfully this TV is great in this regard. It only has a 60Hz panel though, so for extremely smooth and responsive higher refresh rate gaming, it isn't a good choice. Speaking of gaming, this TV supports all the common signals up to 60Hz, which is fine for casual gamers, but for a more responsive experience with a new Xbox or PS5, it isn't the best choice. It does support variable refresh rates though, which is good for a tear-free gaming experience. Now for the smart interface, and this is quite interesting. Typically, TCL has released TVs with the Roku Smart Platform in North America. This year though, TCL has released a few TVs like this one with the Google TV interface. While we didn't really experience any bugs in our testing, a lot of people have been experiencing issues. While many of them are minor, small annoyances like bugs with the Wi-Fi setting and changing picture modes definitely can detract from the overall experience. TCL tends to be pretty responsive, so while we expect these to be fixed in a firmware update, we can't guarantee it. Besides this, there's a wide range of apps and the menus are easy to use and navigate. The sound of this TV is okay, and about typical of many TVs. It has noticeably bad bass performance, but voices should still be clear because of the somewhat balanced sound profile. Having said that, TVs are getting thinner and thinner. Good sound doesn't tend to be much of a focus, so if this is something you care about, then an external soundbar or speakers is the way to go. So, this brings us to the main question. Should you buy this TV? Honestly, this TV is a fairly standard TV with some higher end features such as local dimming and VRR. Compared to last year's S535 Roku model, which is still a current model by the way, they trade blows. The S546 might be better in one aspect, but the S535 is better in another, and in the end, they are very similar TVs. Having said all that, the S546 is beat by competing models such as the Hisense A6G that is better overall. It has better color accuracy, a better local dimming feature, better reflection handling, and is usually found for around the same price. And for a bit more, you can also get the Hisense U6G that is much better overall.